Eric Schneiderman, attorney general for New York, has been kicked out of a government group leading the probe on foreclosure problems at the big banks. Why? Because he was actually doing his job. He said, hey, wait, let's investigate Bank of America and some of the other banks that might have committed wide-scale fraud. Let's not just look into a very limited uh, s selection of topics, which is what they were doing, uh, and leave all the other topics, while at the same time, the deal that they were going to try to sign, and the rest of the attorney generals, along with the Obama administration, wants to sign, is blanket immunity. Without even investigating the other parts, like, hey, did they actually commit fraud in saying these are triple A rated securities, they're fantastic, you should really go ahead and get into them. Without even looking into that, we're about to sign a deal, except the only problem is Schneiderman uh, won't go along. And the banks say, well, look, he's the attorney general of New York. If he doesn't go along, obviously the amount of money we're going to give you is less, because then he can still come and bust us up after we sign the deal with you. So he's really a pivotal player. And now he's beginning to get momentum on his side. He's got Bo Biden, attorney general for Delaware on his side. He's got the Nevada attorney general uh, coming to back him, uh, et cetera. So now he's collected a little group. And now it's becoming a little bit of a rebellion. Hey, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't just kiss the bankers' asses and we should look into it. Look, to give you a sense of why this is a cover-up by the government, the deal would be for $20 billion. That's the one Schneiderman is ob objecting to, right? Do you know, as Matt Taibbi points out, which is a fact, that in Florida alone, the pensions for the workers lost $62 billion in some of these mortgage securities, which the banks fraudulently, in by all accounts and by all evidence, presented as AAA when they weren't AAA. So to give you a sense of the magnitude of the crime, to give, to give them blanket immunity for $20 billion when they ripped off Florida's pension uh, fund for three times that amount, let alone the whole rest of the country, it would be a grotesque crime. So now, Schneider is not going along, they kick him out, which is so transparent. They're like, please, please, this guy, he's throwing a monkey wrench into the secret, you know, backroom deal we had with the bankers. Why won't he let the rest of us be corrupt? Right, so which I love Schneiderman for. But why are they doing this? Why is the Obama administration, which we already told you is massively pressuring Schneiderman, they sent Sean Donovan, the head of the Housing and Urban Development, to go talk to him. Hey, listen, you gotta play ball, you gotta be a team player. Uh, they've got the Treasury Department uh, saying you gotta do this. Obviously, Tim Geithner, the biggest friends the uh, big bankers have ever had. They're all putting pressure on why. Okay, here's the number of reasons why. Number one, it's the Geithner philosophy that the banks equal the economy. So if the banks are doing well, the economy is doing well. If the banks don't do well, it will really hurt the economy. Now, part of that is true. If the banks all go under, of course it would hurt the economy. But there is a way that you can actually forestall that. You can come in and say, hey, I'm going to pay off the depositors, et cetera. And if we, if we put money in as taxpayers, when we, some money comes out, instead of it going to corporate pay, which is at a record uh, degree now, which makes no sense, actually the taxpayers would get paid back. So there's a smart way to do it, right? Now, the, and the second part of it isn't true at all, where you say, well, if the banks are doing well, the economy is doing well. That isn't true at all. The top corporate uh, executives at the banks are doing unbelievably well, and the rest of the economy is in shambles. That theory is totally wrong. I don't know if they actually believe in it or they don't care about it, but that's what they're uh, that what they're pushing at the Obama administration. Now, the other reason that they're worried about that is because they think Bank of America might be going under. Bank of America is in massive trouble. They have uh, $125 billion by, that by all accounts they are short on, meaning that they don't have the $125 billion that they need to, for all the liabilities that they have. They're pretending that they have this $220 billion on the books when the market doesn't think they have anywhere near that amount of money. They think that the, they might only be a value of about $60 billion. So overall, I think what Tim Geithner is worried to death about is if Bank of America goes under, then it might drag a lot of the other banks under, in which case he thinks the economy will be screwed. And this is, by the way, the most favorable light for Tim Geithner. And hence, he's saying to Schneiderman, Basically, we know they robbed us, but we got to continue letting them rob us, otherwise the whole economy is in danger. Okay, that's point number one. The other reason the Obama administration is pressuring them, uh, promises they already made to the banks. They told Bank of America, hey, you buy Countrywide, which is causing a lot of this, 
uh, in, back in 2008, and don't worry, we got your back. So Geiner wants to keep that prime, promise. So he, at every turn, he says, Bank of America, we gotta have their back, we gotta just give them more and more and more money. Number three, the election is coming. And they wanna get the money, the $20 billion, and inject it into the, at least some of that, to the homeowners, so that they can spend, so that the economy picks up uh, before November of 2012, so that President Obama can get reelected. Point number four is that the election is coming, and hence, they wouldn't mind some of those campaign contributions from the executives of Bank of America and all of the other banks. You put all that together, and that leads to the Obama administration putting a world of pressure on Schneiderman saying, hey man, we gotta prop these guys up, I gotta win re-election, so get in line. When Schneiderman doesn't get in line, they say, that's it, you're out, you're on your own. But it doesn't really matter that they kicked him out. I mean, it it's shows you how desperate they are and how transparent they are that they're obviously on the side of the corrupt banks. But if Schneiderman sticks to his guns and says, I'm gonna investigate you to the hilt, and I'm not signing any deal, then Bank of America is in massive trouble. And that's why, by the way, on the stock market, they're selling Bank of America like crazy. It's, it's already lost about 55% of its value. Because people get it, it's a fraud. The whole thing is premised on a value that does not exist.